Michelle Wolf has a stand-up special joke show. It's available on Netflix right now. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. Here to ask you, Michelle, um, what is your favourite joke from Joke Show? Oh, my favourite joke is the one about uh, white women being privileged victims. Yeah. And I, say the, I, I talk about how white men were really smart because they kept us comfortable. Um, it's very hard to start a revolution from under a duvet. It seems pretty timely right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you um do you think um uh can, do you think of a moment of your career or life uh where that was particularly highlighted uh the sort of um privileged victimhood of being a white woman? I mean it's constantly every day, but also I see women I see women playing the privileged victim card. You know, like, especially right now, you see, like, a lot of white women are, like, they talk about protesting like it's the new brunch. They talk about privilege like it's the new workout fad. Um, you know, it make everything about ourselves. Um, it's quite a skill. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're putting together a, a comedy special or, or a stand-up uh, set like you have, um, what what's in your process what's sort of the most important thing for you um making sure i explore kind of every nook and cranny of the joke you know like i don't want to like leave any jokes on the table um and i want to make sure that like it feels like the hour feels like you just saw something you know like it wasn't just like a string of in cult, like a string of not interconnected jokes but it felt like um like you saw like a, a piece of something. Um, and you know, for me, one of the most important things I do is I always go on the road and I, I run the show over and over and over again. And, um, you know, just make sure every joke works everywhere kind of thing. Mm. Was there a particular part of the special that was uh, particularly difficult or challenging to sort of get right and figure out? I think the very first line, like how I get into that very first joke, kind of rewriting how to get into that joke. Because I had, at one point I had more of a preamble to it, and then where I ended up getting to was just like a kind of my most direct way in, which I think is ended up being the most effective, or it doesn't really matter anyway now because that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of like me a bit when I'm uh, like um, on a phone call. I never know how to start the right. phone call. But once I'm in, it's fine. But it's just yeah. that. It's, and like, I you know, know, I, know a lot of, I know a lot of comics like to do the like, yeah. oh, I'm here in New York or wherever they are and, and uh, kind of do a little bit about that. But I just I wanted to just jump right in. Um, and, you know, it's like starting now. Boom. Mm. Um, obviously, as a writer, but also like a presenter and a host, you've had like a lot of experience in television with comedy. How is like doing a stand up show um, different to the sort of other muscles you've flexed um, in, in the television world? Yeah, I mean, stand up is really, it's just you out there. They're your ideas. It's your point of view. You know, you're the you're uh, uh, for other people. Or, um, it's just it it lives differently because stand up when you're in a club and even when you watch specials online, it, it puts you in this different category. I just feel like stand up is its own particular thing. Um, any of that stuff said outside of that category could maybe sound crazy or mean or, you know, cancel -y or whatever it is. But in that particular stand-up arena, you're kind of like, anything goes, we're here in a club, we're in a basement, let's get dirty together. Um, and that's part of the reason why I like it. You know, I feel like television, writing for television, performing on television, everything needs to be a little bit more polished and, um, you know, don't really expect it to be the... <laughs> the moral compass that uh, <laughs> you may want us to be. Yeah, well, like, and it, it is interesting, um, 
you talk a bit in the special about the double standards uh, between men mm -hmm. and women and uh, men and women are comics as well as um, just men and women in society. And the, the sort of thing that I was thinking of like was it's sort of interesting that in the comedic world, which is a world that to, to me, the great power of comedy is it can challenge authority structures and the way of viewing the world that it, it's taken quite a while for women to um, be as uh, prominent in that field. Uh, do you want to speak to sort of that perhaps? Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, I mean, I think there's there's so many reasons why it's taken longer for women. Um, but I think part of it is that a lot of female stand-up wasn't challenging power structures. You know, they were kind of just trying to fit into what the mold, they thought the mold should be, you know? Like, I think Joan Rivers really tried to, she tried to infiltrate and, um, you know, do her own thing, let no one else, you know, kind of uh, have her have like some sort of guide or, or moral compass. And, and she just, and and she essentially ruled the this like stand up world, you know, she had late night shows, she's worked up until she died. She's, you know, uh, really like, she showed you that if you want to put your head down and do the work and be really funny, you can play with the top dogs. And that's just, you know, it's just, it, it was possible back then. So it's clearly even more possible now. It's just, how much of that are you willing to do? Yeah. Um, you talk a bit at the end of the special about the White House Correspondents' Dinner and the response that you got for for that and how there's a double standard as, was, you, you know, that was a good example of a double standard. What I found particularly sort of uh, interesting, um, to, to put it kindly, uh, from that whole experience is that it seemed like the people who were the most um, um, critical of you and what you said on that night uh, are some of the people who have been the most maybe accepting and uh, gracious for some of the things that the president that said that have been vulgar. Oh, of course. I mean, they, <laughs> I mean, it works like that on both sides. Everyone is incredibly yeah. hypocritical of one another. Mm. You know, the things that Trump says, of course, the left's going to hate the things that someone on the left says, of course, the, thing, the people on the right are going to hate. And mm. sometimes very unfairly so, you know, like there's been times uh, where Trump said something and I've been like, well, he's not wrong, you know, yeah. and, and uh we're so preoccupied with being absolutely against each other that we can't even see that sometimes. And I think that's like a, I mean, it, people will always do that. It's always been done. It's just, I think more heightened right now. Um, and also, yeah, I mean, the, the, those, it's hilarious to me. I, I live in, I like to live in the gray. I live in the middle. Um, I like to take the route that gives me the funniest joke. Um, and, uh, I will sell my morals for a punchline immediately, <laughs> um, but, uh, the, it's funny to watch either side go after one another being like, I can't believe they do that. I can't believe they do that. And they're like, you guys have both been doing a lot of the same things. Um, and you know, it's. A lot of it's just fueled by the media and what makes a better story. It'd be really boring if uh, people agreed with one another and got along. That's it wouldn't make for great television. And all these news networks, they're on for 24 hours a day and they need they need to fill that time with something. So why not fill it with a bunch of fights and um, heightened drama and, uh, you know, things that that seem like catty and gossipy rather than actually digging into the like the real meat of situations and policy and and things that are actually happening behind the scenes it might be a lot more boring but uh incredibly more important yeah i i think that's true and uh michelle just sort of reflecting on comedy and um even your sound special what do you find funny um I, the, one of the, the thing I find the funniest is when 
um, people circumvent expectations, you know, like when you, you just, the thing that comes out of a comic's mouth is, and, and I don't care if it's politically correct, I don't care if it's um, rude, I don't care if it's, uh, you know, I, I don't care at all. I just, I love when you're surprised by what some someone said. Like that you, especially as a writer and as a comic, like I'm like, oh, I can't believe I never thought of that angle. Like that kind of stuff I absolutely love. Um, and I love, you know, like, and uh, some of the best comics do this, but they go after the really tough topics, you know, and they they um, make you think about things in a different way. And then, you know, also laugh at the same time. Um, but, you know, I also find dumb stuff funny, you know, like anytime there's like, you know, and then they put like costumes on cats that have like the arms and it makes them look like they're like walking like pirates. I love that. I yeah. watch it all. So, uh, <laughs> do you have, uh, do, 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 is there someone who's like particularly influenced you or you look up to in the comedy world? Yeah, I mean, I've been lucky enough to be on the road with uh, some of the best comics in the world. You know, like I've opened for Louis, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. Um, and they've all been incredible influences on me. Um, I have been staying at Dave Chappelle's guest cottage for the past. Oh, there we months. go. Um, and we've had just amazing conversations about comedy, about being a comic, um, about careers, all, all this about life, you know, like it's, uh, he's really like been an incredible mentor and an incredible example to watch you know he taped that 846 um down just down the road at a, a friend's pavilion that we've been doing shows at and um it was the first night he'd been on stage since this all happened and to be able to see that and to see him perform and like just be on stage and be so like gutsy and and you know, uh, really just like present. I don't know. That's, I hate saying something that sounds so actory, but, um, you know, like, uh, fearless too, just to go on stage and just put it all out there. And I see him do it every night, you know, like I, every night we do shows out at this cornfield in the middle of Ohio. Like he, it's, it's amazing to watch him work. And I'm, I'm very lucky to be in his presence. Yeah. What, what's something uh, quickly you've learned about Dave from living in his guest house? Um, that guy can make a mean fried snapper. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. What, what's something that you think he's learned about you from <laughs> you living in his guest house? Um, I can make a, a really good salad. <laughs> there you go. What's 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 the top salad? What what's your top salad ingredient, Michelle? What's the what's the secret to a good salad? Well, I think what people don't understand about salads is you have to season the lettuce. You have to salt it. You have to pepper it. Garlic, whatever you want to put on it. Um, but the best thing that happened was one night I was making salad and I had a carrot ginger dressing. And Dave looks at me and he goes, "Of course you'd have a carrot ginger dressing." <laughs> It didn't even go. occur to me that that is my personality in a bottle. Uh, to, to finish off, Michelle, I was wondering, uh, what are you most proud of with Joke Show? Um, you know, I'm I'm just happy to keep keep doing specials and keep evolving as a comedian. You know, like um, I think this is a step forward from Nice Lady, and what I'm working on now, I think, is a step forward from Joke Show. And really, that's all. That's all I want. I, I want to. I love telling jokes. I want to be able to tell jokes and um, keep getting better at it and and flexing muscles that um, I I wasn't. I don't know if I have yet, and um, and that hopefully I can figure out and get stronger. And um, I don't know, just get better, like the nerd that I am. <laughs> there you go. Well. Uh Michelle, thank you so much for talking to us today. Um, so, uh, all the best of luck with the upcoming Emmy Awards. And for people watching this interview, you can go to goldderby.com to make your own Emmy Award predictions. Thank Thanks so you much. so much for having me. 